Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip we're going to be going over an example on how to solve polynomials of higher degrees using the factory method. Okay, so in this problem we are asked to solve the polynomial equation, this given polynomial equation by factoring. So before we get started we're going to review two uh, quick rules that can help us to uh, factor this polynomial with ease. Okay. So the first one has to do with the difference of cubes. Difference of cubes. Okay, so how do you factor a difference of cubes? Let's say you have a cubed minus b cubed. The factored form of a difference of cubes is a minus b times a square minus, I mean, plus ab plus b square. Okay, the first sign in the factored state is always the same as the sign of the sum or difference of cubes. The second sign is always the opposite, and the last is always positive. All right, so you can keep this in mind. Let me show you the positive um, version too. So a cubed plus b cubed is equal to, first sign is going to be the same, a plus b. Second sign, a squared is going to be um, the opposite of the sign here, which is negative minus a, b, and the last sign is always positive. Okay, so difference of cubes. And then also, you have to remember the factorization trick for perfect square trinomials. Okay, there is a, uh, there is a shortcut for factoring perfect square trinomials. So let's say we have a perfect square trinomial, a square plus 2ab plus b square. If you root the first and the last and bring down the middle sign, you have the factored state of this polynomial, which is a plus b quantity square. Okay? And then if you have a square minus 2ab plus b square, that factors into a minus b quantity square. All right, so let's keep this in mind. Okay, so let's go back to the problem. Um, if you want to factor this by, I mean, solve this by factoring, since you have four terms, the first thing that comes to mind would be to factor by grouping. Okay, so let's just try that and see if it works. So to factor by grouping, I group the first two terms and the last two terms. Now I'm going to factor out the GCF from the first two. Uh, x to the third minus 6x squared, the GCF, you have a 1 here. A 1 and 6 is 1, of course. And the GCF of x to the third and x squared is x squared. You pick the lower of the two exponents. So you have x squared times. Now, if you factor out a GCF, it says do you dividing these um, terms by the GCF. Okay? So x to the third divided by x squared is x. 6x squared divided by x squared is 6. Now, over here, the GCF is... Um, positive 4. Um, if you factor that out, you have plus 4 times 12x divided by 4 is 3. x minus 8 divided by 4 is 2 equals 0. Now, if you anytime you factor and you want to check, you can always distribute to see if it's true, like x squared times x is x to the third. x squared times 6 is 6x squared. 4x times 3x is 12x. 4 times 2 is 8. So, our factorization is correct. Now let's move on to the next step. Factoring by grouping. If um, this method were to work, these quantities in parentheses have to be identical. Are they identical here? The answer is no. So what does that tell us? Factoring by grouping um, leads, ends up at a dead end right here. Okay, it doesn't really help us to factor this polynomial. All right, so what we have to do is go right back to scratch. x to the third minus 6x squared plus 12x minus 8 equals 0. And uh, we can basically inspect this polynomial and see is there anything about this polynomial that can give us a hint as to what method can be used to factor it completely. Now, if you take a look at the first term, you have x to the third. And the last term is 8. 
Now, if you think about it, what do these two terms have in common? These two terms are cubes. So that's a clue for you to use the sum or difference of cubes formula to attempt to, to solve, I mean, to factor this polynomial, okay? So let's, let's try that and see if it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the first and the last, x to the third, minus 8, and then the middle together, negative 6x squared plus 12x. Okay, now, if you look at these two right here, we can cluster them together. What is this? This is a difference of cubes. All right, so now that we've identified this as a difference of cubes, how do we factor our difference of cubes? Okay, let me go over the steps for factoring difference of cubes on the right-hand corner right here. So there are three steps involved in factoring difference of cubes. Step number one is to write down the correct formula. Okay, write down the formula. It's kind of like your guide or like your map to help you factor it correctly. Um, there are two formulas here, so you want to be careful to write down the correct formula. Step number two, you want to find A and B. Okay, and lastly, you want to substitute and, yeah, just basically substitute and um, simplify, substitute and simplify. Some problems involve simplification, others do not. In this case, we are not going to have to do any simplification here um, since A and B are just uh, single terms, okay? Now, um, let's go ahead and apply the formula, I mean the steps. So, first of all, we are to write down the formula. We are working with difference of cubes here. Um, this is an equation setup, so the way I'm going to set this up will be slightly different. Um, so, since this is a minus, we're going to be using the difference of cubes formula. Um, and this right here is a, this one right here is a sum. Sum of cubes. Okay, now um, the difference of cubes formula is a to the third minus b to the third. That's the left side. Um, what does that simplify into? The right side is, is going to become a minus b quantity times a square plus ab plus b square. Okay? So Step number one has been executed. We've written down the formula, although I broke it apart since I'll be filling the um, factors form underneath. Now let's find A and B. How do you find A and B? Now, um, X cube and A cube occupy the same spot, so we know that uh, A cube is equal to X cube. That's the first term in the difference of cubes. Okay, now let's simplify that. How do you get A by itself? You use the inverse of cube, which is cube root. So you take the cube root of both sides. And what do we find out? We find out that A is equal to X. All right, this cube and cube root are inverse uh, functions or operations. So they cancel each other out. Now let's shift our attention to the determination of the B value. Uh, B cubed, the second term in the formula, is equivalent to or occupies the same spot as 8 in the expression to be factored. So we have B cubed equals 8 into isolate um, B here. We'll take a cube root again, cube root, cube root. And this clearly tells us that B is what? B is 2 because 2 to the third power is 8. Okay? Now let me show you how to uh, find cube root using a Texas instrument calculator. So if you want to find a cube root, um, all you do is you take the number and then you raise it to the um, fractional exponent of the root you're taking. So since you're taking the third root, it's going to be raised to the parentheses 1 divided by 3. Okay? If you do not put the um, parentheses, your calculator will... Uh, read the problem wrongly, okay? 
So you have h raised to the one third and the answer is two. Now let's say you did h raised to the one divided by three. And you press enter. This is what you get. This is wrong because the calculator thinks you are um, raising h to the first power, which is eight, and then dividing it by three. So that's incorrect. The correct way of entering the cube root is to group the power, the fractional power in parentheses, press enter and you get the cube root, okay? All right, so now we have A and B. We're going to advance to step three, which is substitute and simplify, okay? So A is what? A is X minus B two times A squared, which is X squared plus AB, which is 2x, plus B squared, which is 2 squared, 4. Okay? All right, so that's that for the um, factorization of this difference of cubes. Now, let's shift our attention to these two terms on the right. What is the GCF of negative 6x squared and 12x? The GCF is negative 6x. So if you factor that out, you're going to be left with x minus 2, okay, equals 0. Now, what do you notice about these two, the two sides of this um, expression right here? You notice that you have a common factor, namely x minus 2. x minus 2 is common. So what do we do with x minus 2? Since they're common, we factor it out, right? So we have x minus 2, and then we're left with this quantity right here, x squared plus 2x plus 4. 4 and negative 6x, we group those two together in their own uh, parentheses. So we have x squared plus 2x plus 4 minus 6x equals 0. All right, now let's shift our attention here to this um, polynomial with four terms. Um, can I simplify? Absolutely, 2x and negative 6x are like terms. So we have x minus 2 times x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. Okay? Now, if you inspect this closely, what do you notice about this uh, quadratic trinomial? You notice that this is a perfect square trinomial. How do you determine that? Well, if you take the, if you double the square root of the first term, x squared, and the last term, 4, do you end up with the middle term? What is 2 times x times 2? You get 4x. Is that the middle term? Absolutely. So this is a perfect square trinomial. So what does that mean? We can use this factorization trick right here to factor this trinomial, okay? So that just involves taking the square root of the first and the last term and bringing down the middle sign. Okay, so we have x minus 2 times x, bring down the middle sign, minus 2 quantity square equals 0. Another way to factor this, you can use your uh, nice little x game. Okay, if you don't know this factoring trick, Factoring using the X game or the AC method works equally well. So AC goes on top, which is 4, and B is negative 4. The two numbers that work are negative 2 and negative 2. So the factored form of this would be X minus 2 times X minus 2, which is exactly what we have right here. Okay? So whichever method you want to use, you, you end up with the same result. So the completely factored form of this is uh, we have x minus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 2 equals 0. Or you can write it as x minus 2 to the third power. Okay? Um, since I'm solving here, I'm just going to take one of the factors, x minus 2, and set it equal to 0. They are identical, so I don't have to do it three times because that will yield the same result. To finish our problem solving process, we are going to isolate x. So we'll simply add 2, add 2, and that yields x equals positive 2. Since there are three factors of x here, we are going to have x equals 2 with a multiplicity 
multiplicity of 3 because it shows up 3 times. So that's your final result. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. Um, if you found this tutorial um, beneficial to you, please give us a thumbs up. We we'll appreciate the feedback. Um, do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other tutorials such as this. If you have any questions about this example or the factorization of higher degree polynomials in general, just ask us your question in the comment section below and we'll be glad to assist you as early as possible. More clips can be found on markgoodserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.